Okay, so let's do some factoring review for our quiz next class. So if you have your calculators, have them handy. Okay, we can use them to check. Okay, if at all you need to just skip to question five because you didn't know how to do five, just go ahead and do that. Or you can just follow along with me. So when we're factoring, the first thing we want to do is check for a GCF. So I'm looking at this first row. I don't see any greatest common factor in one, two, or number three. Okay? So when there is no greatest common factor, we set up our two parentheses. And what we put first multiplies to this first term. So x times x is x squared, and that's the same in all of the first row. as they all start with an x squared. Now, if we look at the signs, so they multiply to a negative, I know my signs are going to be different. So if anything, put down some work so that you can get some partial credit. When the n is a positive number, that means the signs are the same. We look to the middle, they're both going to be negative. Now, for this number right here, I'm looking at the factors of 12. So 1 times 12 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. I need these two numbers to multiply to negative 12 and then add to a negative 4. So that's going to be 2 and 6. The larger number goes with the sign in the middle, so the 6 is negative, 2 is positive. So once again, these two numbers multiply to negative 12, and a positive 2 plus a negative 6 adds to negative 4. So for this first row, I will write out the factors of the last number, but I won't do that for every single question. So 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. Which ones are going to combine with the signs being different to a positive 3? That's 4 and 7. 7 is bigger, the middle sign is positive, so 7 and 4. A positive 7 times negative 4 is a negative 28, and a positive 7 plus a negative 4 is 3. The last one in this row, so 1 times 10, 2 times 5, the signs are the same. So, which again, which factors add to 7? That would be a negative 2 and negative 5 multiplies to a positive 10 and adds to a negative 7. I'm just going to take a minute and box all of those. And then we'll check the last one just to be sure that we're right or remind you how to check. You go to y equals. I'm going to clear everything that's in there. You type in the original trinomial. You type your factors into line two, go to your table, and if the numbers in the table match, you did it correctly. So we are all set. All right, so let's do it row by row again. So let's look at this row. Do any of these expressions have a greatest common factor? No. So we set up our two parentheses. Let's actually do six first because it has a k to the fourth. And it actually starts with the variable where in these two, the variable is at the end. So the k is going to come first. But up here, we did x times x because when we multiply, we add the exponents. We don't write the exponents of 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is actually going to start k squared times k squared. Okay. The signs are the same because it multiplies to a positive. We look to the middle. They're both negative. And what multiplies to 4 and adds to 5 would be 4 and 1. A negative 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 4, and negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. But these two happen to be two dot expressions. So we need to factor this again, and this one's going to be k plus 2. Remember, our factors are conjugates, so that means they're the same binomial, just one with a sum and the other with a difference, or plus, minus. And then this one is done. 
Let's move all the way to the left in number four. So here, with the x being last in the trinomial, it's going to come second in the parentheses. Now, I'm looking for the factors of 12 that combine to 4. That would be 6 times 2. And we want the negative 4, so that's the larger number, which goes with this outer term, right, the outer and inner. So this is negative 6, positive 2, because 2x and negative 6x does combine to that negative 4x. All right, factors of 18 that combine to 9 would be 6 and 3. 6 times 3 is 18, and 6 plus 3 is 9. The signs are going to be the same. To multiply to a positive x squared, when we look in the middle, they're both negative. The next row. So let's look for a GCF. Do any of these expressions have a greatest common factor? And I do not see one. So let's set up our two parentheses. And we know that when it's k to the fourth, just like this one, it'll start k squared times k squared. The two numbers that multiply to 18 and combine to 7 are 9 and 2. 9 being the larger, and I know the signs are different because of the negative 18. So negative 9 times a positive 2 is negative 18, and negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. All right, we don't have a trinomial, and this is dots. This is the difference of two perfect squares. So 1 times 1, and then 4 times 4, z squared times z squared, with the plus minus. And then this is not a difference of two perfect squares. So I want to copy that down where this one is again. So this is 1 plus 2z, 1 minus 2z. And 256, that's 16 squared, correct? Yes. So 16 times 16 plus minus and to get 81y to the fourth, that would be 9y squared, 9y squared, and then this is dots. So copy down that first one, and then it'd be 4 and 4 plus 3y minus 3y. Again, those two factors have to be conjugates. All right, next row, is there a GCF? Finally, so we have GCF in number 10, it's 2. So we divide out the 2, we'll have y squared minus 25. And then that's dots, so this has to be factored again. So it's going to be y, y, and then plus 5, minus 5. Greatest common factor in 11 is 4. So it's 4 times y squared minus 9, which is dots. 9 is a perfect square, so we factor this again. So y, y, and it's plus 3 minus 3 to get the 9. All right, number 12. Let's find move this mouse out of here. There is no GCF. 2 is a factor of 4, but it's not a factor of 9. So this is factoring where there a value greater than 1. So it's going to be 2x and x. And the factors of 4, so I will write them down again. 1 and 4, 2 and 2. The signs are the same because it multiplies to a positive. Look to the middle. They're both negative. But whatever number we put here, we're going to double add it to the other so that we get 9. So I want to double the 4 to get 8, add the 1 to get 9. So we have the negative 1x, negative 8x to get the negative 9x. Good. All right, let's look at the next row. Do we have a greatest common factor here? 
We do not in 13, but we do in 14. We do not in 15. In 14, these are all even numbers, so we can divide out the 2. So 2 times x squared plus 5x minus 2. Oh, that's a 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5, 10. 2 times 2, 4. And then the question is, can this be factored? So I'm going to grab a sheet of scrap paper. Because I don't know. I have to do some trial and error. So if I set up my two parentheses, 3x and x. Factors of 2, the signs are different and I need a 5. So it's only 1 and 2. I put the 2 here that gives me 6 and 1, which yes, combines to 5. So bring down the 2, 3x, and x. And we want the 2 here and the 1 there because going back to the parentheses, I don't have room. This is a 1x, 6x. The larger number needs to be positive, so that's going to be outer, inner negative, and we get that positive 5x. Perfect. So minus 1 plus 2. The one to the left. There is no greatest common factor, so we set up our two parentheses. It's going to be 2x and x. All right, scrap paper. Let me rotate my paper this way. 2x, x. Factors of 12. We've got 1 and 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. I need a 5 in the middle. What's it going to be? Uh, I need a 5. I put the 3 here, 6 and 4. No. Uh, I put the 4 here, though, in 3. We have 8 and 3, which is 5. Good. So I want the 3 here, 4 here. Larger number is positive, so that would be the outer or the 8. Plus 8 minus 3 is 5. And, oof, I'm going to start with a 10x squared. Okay, so I'm going to grab scrap paper right away because this is my key. And is it going to be 10x and x? Or is it going to be 5x and 2x? She was kind of that the last number is a 3. So I'm going to grab a pencil and slide this over. All right, let's try the first one. We need 13. So if I put a 1 here and a 3 here, we have 30 outside and 1. 30 and 1 is way too big. Signs have to be different. So let's try the 1 here. 3 here. But we do have 3x and 10x. If I add them, that would work, but the signs have to be different. So that's out. Okay, I need 13. So 5 times the 1 or the 3 would give me 15. And 2 times 1, 2. 15 minus 2 is 13. So that's the one I want. So this is a 5x. And then the 1, 2x, and the 3. Again, we want this to be positive because outside would be larger than negative. So it may look like I am able to do that in one straight shot on my answer keys, but it's because I get out a sheet of paper. All right, let's move to factoring by grouping as we have more than three terms. So if we group the first two, group the second two. The greatest common factor for the first uh, set of binomials will be x squared, and that would be 3x minus 1. So we know we should get the 3x minus 1 in our parentheses on the right side. But that's a negative, splitting the two groups. This is negative. And the GCF for 2 and 6 is 2. Dividing that by a negative 2, that would give us positive 3x. Divide that by a negative 2, that would be a minus 1. 
And we put these two monomials out front of the parentheses in one binomial. So x squared minus 2 and then the 3x minus 1. And this is not dots because tube is not a perfect square. So group, group, x squared again. Um, so it's 2x plus 1 minus, so that's a minus. And then there's no GCF, so we can put the 1 in there. And then divide that by negative 1, it's a positive 2x. Divide that by negative 1 plus 1. The monomials can go first together or the common binomial can go first. So this time I'll put the 2x plus 1 first, and then the x squared minus 1 second. There's not much room, and this is dots. So I'm actually going to do my best to squeeze that in there. So that would be x plus 1 times x minus 1 for dots. And I just covered up my exponent of a 5, so I'm going to rewrite this. All right, grouping this one. This group, they, 4 goes into 12, so it's going to be 4. The square is the smaller. So to get the cube, we need a y minus 3. That's a plus, so this is a plus. 4 goes into 12, so the GCF is 4, and then y minus 3. So putting these two together up front be 4y squared plus 4. I hope you can hear the 4s, that common factor, when you're writing it or saying it out loud. So we have to then pull out a GCF. So pull out the 4 from this one, and we're left with y squared plus 1, and then the y minus 3. All right, another factoring by grouping is we have four terms. 5 goes into 20, so 5y squared, because the square is the smallest. And then it would be y plus 4. And then minus GCF of a 5. So it would be y, and then negative 20 over negative 5 plus 4. So I'll put the 5y squared minus 5 up front, and I hope you heard that GCF as I said it. So we have to pull out the 5y squared minus 1. Oh, geez. This is a dot as well. This one's super long. So final answer is 5y plus 1, y minus 1. There's the dots, and then copy down that y plus 4. We needed more room. All right, the last one. Yay! I do see a GCF of x. I divide everything by x, and it's going to be x times x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 3. Well, just like those k's above, we can do x squared times x squared in our two parentheses, and then does, or, uh, yeah, does the number 3 have factors that add to 4? Well, 3 is prime. The only factors are 1 and 3. And if the signs are the same, they do add to negative 4. So we're going to factor this one more time. So x, well, let's hope this is it. x squared, x squared. Um, signs the same, look to the middle, minus, minus. And again, it was 3 times 1. And no, we'll go out with a bang. We have to factor that one more time because that stops. So copying down the first two factors, then it's going to finish x plus 1 times x minus 1. And boom, we're done. Good luck on your quiz. Let's stop the video.